Night Football in Denver Colts Broncos. It is the Horsey Bowl, baby. Neither team has a winning record. Yay! So it's let's ride or let's hide one of the two. My stay golden pony boy breakdown. Leather jacket and all the outsiders. It makes sense. Bye! Operating on no sleep, 1K Adams on the Up and Adams show, but I'm excited for this one. We've got Colts, Broncos, hours from now in Denver. Both teams underwhelming offensively. Jonathan Taylor ruled out for this one. Javante Williams, unfortunately, done for the season. Melvin Gordon is fumbling. Both teams are turning the ball over. Penalties up the wazoo for Denver, but somebody's got to win. My preview coming up, but first, a very special guest. Tell me what you know about me. If I said it, then I'm in it, and then what it's gonna be. I see everything that I want in my reach. And it came, I ain't playing. If I am, it's for keeps. I'm too heavy, too heavy, too heavy, too. Those highlights, man, there is just nobody like him. Six-time Pro Bowler, first-team All-Pro wide receiver, one of my hometown favorites. My dad, who doesn't even speak English, is texting me that he's so excited that Brandon Marshall is joining the show. Oh, you can, of course, see him on I Am Athlete, a media. It's not even a company. It is an experience. B. Marsh, how are you? Hey, I'm great. I'm in D.C. Okay. I just finished up some Soul Cycle, cleansed my soul. I had a few drinks last night, so I want to get all that toxicity out my okay, body. Okay, okay. We're going to do a live show tonight. Soul Cycle, thank you so much this morning. So what happens when you roll into a Soul Cycle? Do they, I mean, I can't imagine looking over and you're on bike 43. Okay, I swear, I was on bike 43 this morning. Shut up! I, I swear, I was supposed to be on 51 in the back. But it was the, the class wasn't full, so I moved up. And My I went favorite with a number. So we were, I, were on, I was on 43, she was on 44. Phenomenal experience. But yeah, it's, what's going on here? There's just some, it's, that, it's a Chicago thing. I don't know what it is, but all I know is this. We have week five looking as Hold dead on. in the eye. What? Before we move on from that conversation, Kay, I just, I just think like men going in there and doing the whole this thing on the bike and the X, that's a little too much. What do you it's mean? It's a little too much. Well, have you ever gone to Soul Cycle and you got to do the little yeah, dances? Yeah, you got to do this and you got to do this and then you got you got to do this. <laughs> and they have you, you doing like push-ups and stuff. And then they're I'm like, and then they have you doing these things with like two one pound weights and you like, they're pretending that it's hard to do. And you're like, what is this? No offense, no, my, Soul Cycle. My, I had to stop. The, the weights got heavy for me today. Yeah. Are you a bad dancer? You just had to have to dance on the bike, B-Marsh. Get with it. Yeah, I know, I know. What's going on in football? What's happening? Do we got to talk football today or can we continue to talk about everything else? We can talk about whatever you want. I mean, I do want to ask you, you know, four weeks in, what's popping out to you? Is there something that's catching your eye? I know you love the Eagles Super Bowl favorites, but what do you want to talk about? Yeah, we talked about this a couple of days ago on uh, another show that I'm on um, inside the NFL, just parody in the NFL, right? Um, you know, I think this is the year where you know, any team, well, I wouldn't say any team. There's still a, probably about four to six teams. Like, you have no chance. The Texans, you have no chance, Aww. Texans. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a couple of Detroit Lions, phenomenal story. But you have no chance, right? So there are a few teams like that. But for, for the most part, can the Jacksonville Jaguars potentially make a run? Philadelphia Eagles, who would have thought the Philadelphia Eagles would be one of the hottest teams in football right now? I know two is down, but I love Teddy Bridgewater. I love me some Teddy Bridgewater. The Dolphins. The Dolphins uh, in this situation right now, so parity in the NFL is what stands out to me through four weeks. It's so true. And then, you know, there's two teams that you want to give hope for. Two Neither of them have a winning record that are going at it tonight in the Pony Bowl between the Colts and the Broncos. That one, of course, uh, in Denver. I asked you this. Richard Sherman's there on the Amazon broadcast. What happens between he and Russell Wilson? Do they avoid each other? Because football fields, people think they're huge, but they're not. They're intimate, awkward places, or they can be. Well, well, first, before we even get into that, because that's a great that's a great question. But no, there, how many teams are sitting at two and two right now? OK, too many. So, yeah, there's a lot of teams. So I, I, I still think there's a lot of football left for some of these teams. I know everybody's up on it. Uh, that's down on the Denver Broncos and, and Russell Wilson. But it's going to be a journey. Right. There's a lot of football left. Um, you know, we know Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's uh, the, the ultimate competitor. It doesn't get more competitive than Russell Wilson. Um, he's also the ultimate pro. So he'll go up to Richard Sermon. He'll say, hey, brother, what's going on? It's all love. Deep down, I know he feels some type of way. Uh, Richard Sherman, um, 
he'll he'll say hello to Russ. He'll say okay. hello hello to Russ, but he's going to try to fill Russ out. But 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 if it was me, K, like if I'm Russell Wilson, I'll try to throw a ball over my receiver's head and, and hit Russell uh, uh, Richard Sherman in the head while he's doing his broadcast. You know when you warming up and you have the commentators on the side. Yeah, I'll try to hit him. Okay, you'll try to hit him. So we got maybe he'll he'll Bobby Wagner and maybe he'll go and they'll just tackle him even though Come he doesn't on. have pads on. He's in that Armani suit on the sidelines. Right. I mean, some things some things are supposed to stay in the locker room. Like you guys won a Super Bowl together. Okay, yeah. I don't care about all the other things. Like, you guys battled together. Y'all been through so much. Y'all pushed each other. Y'all challenged each other. Don't go out there and say those things. Uh, Richard Sherman, I love Richard Sherman. Uh, another competitor, um, all-time uh, competitor. But at the end of the day, man, I didn't like those statements because you guys won a Super Bowl together. That's right. extremely hard. You have guys like myself uh, uh, play 13 years and, and wish I was in those positions, right? And you cherish those moments. You respect those moments. That's what you're going to think about 20 years from now when you're not on Amazon, when Russell Wilson's not a starting quarterback at the yeah. Denver Broncos. You guys are going to be getting together in Seattle, uh, reuniting and talking about the glory days. And you don't want that beef in between you guys. You want to be able to come together, embrace, and say, man, remember what we used to do? And then showing your kids... Like, and they I'll will. Play with that guy. They will. Hey, does he? Does you've said this a lot now? This has been all season for you. Does Richard Sherman? What's your relationship like with him? Is he? Is he texting you saying, "Why are you like? Why are you even talking about me? There's nothing to do with you." Or did, no? No. I, I mean, for me, uh, Richard and I don't have like a like that type of bond. Okay. But I have hit him up to join the podcast. He's like, ah, I can't do it right now. You know, because he just started his own podcast. Yeah. And, you know, obviously extremely busy. But he always replies to me. Okay. You know, Richard's a nice guy. You know, he's an ultimate pro. Um, but he's a nice guy. You both are um, two very we honest both, people. We're both unapologetic. Yes. You know, like, I don't think he'll be upset with me telling him I don't dig, you know, him going out there and spilling some of the beans. Yeah. Uh, you know what I don't like? You're, you know, you're really inspiring me to keep it all the way real here. I, you know, I was, I was uh, on my way into work this morning, and I thought to myself, what do I want to ask Brandon about? And I looked at the NFL news page, just the NFL.com, and I'm like, what are the big stories? It's kind of boring right now. Like There aren't crazy storylines. And the one thing that's huge is this Brady situation, but it's not even him on the field. Like He looked good on the field. It is so gross to me, Brandon, how many people out there, fans or pundits or whatever you want to say, are sort of making light of what is going on in his personal life, potentially, which we don't really know anything. There are odds out there on who Giselle is going to date next. And there's jokes about Zach Wilson and mom dating and all this stuff. And, you know, this is potentially a divorce that we're talking about. What do you think about people dragging them to high heavens right now? Uh, it's disgusting. Uh, but unfortunately, um, you know, this is part of life, right? And as, as far as Brady, the athlete, um, you know, we all go through things and, and we have to find a way to continue to move forward, whether you're a pro athlete or if you're, you, you know, you work in another field, you know, things happen, um, you know, whether it's financial troubles, it's divorce, um, it's health issues, you know, we have to find a way every single day to be our best selves and to learn from those mistakes. Um, obviously, you know, we've kind of put place uh, Tom and Giselle on his pedestal. How many times have we seen them, you know, in these uh, amazing moments and kissing and hugging after? Um, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it's not that bad and they can, you know, find a way to reconcile and, 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 and figure it out. But if, if they have to move on, hell, they have to move on. Right. right? They have to move on. 52 percent of most marriages end up in divorce. It's a it's it's a it's a shame, you know, but at the end of the day, it happens. It happens. Yeah. And he's a public figure, but people the, the endless fascination with it and the tearing him down. I don't know if it's just like Brady hate or whatever, but it's divorce we're talking about. So I wish people would shut the F up about it, honestly, until, uh, you know, and focus on what he's doing on the field. And speaking of that, let's talk about uh, a little football here because it's no secret. I want to talk about the Rams because we just saw them on Monday night and now we're kicking off week five. But to wrap up week four, it was Matthew Stafford not throwing the ball downfield. But whenever he threw the ball, it was straight to Cooper Cup. Only him. It's his favorite target. Everybody knows. It, but it's his only option on every single play. Do you know what that reminds me of? 
<laughs> Jay Cutler. You, you <laughs> and Jay Cutler. Right, because clear, I mean, it was great for you personally. We pulled up some of the numbers. It is insane. You are the only player to get more shares, a bigger target share than what Cooper Cup got in a season. That is you, my friend, 2012 from <laughs> Cutler. And it was awesome. But I got to ask you, outside of, you know, numbers for you personally, you were an all pro that year, you know, and you helped the Bears to the playoffs, which I'm really thankful for, of course. Uh, when you look at this Rams team and what's going on, how how problematic is it to funnel targets in one guy's direction? Well, let's go back to 2012, right? I, I think I had 118 catches, 1,500 <laughs> yards, 12 or 14 touchdowns. Okay. It was it was an awesome year, uh, but Devin Hester was pissed, okay? Uh, Earl Bennett was pissed. Matt Forte was pissed, no. right? I promise you, you know, like, and, and, and as a receiver, like, I, of course you want the ball, you want those targets, but at the end of the day, if it's, it's, it's an uncomfortable place for Cooper Cup or even when I was in that situation, when you walk into the receiver room and you got guys that's looking at you and maybe, you know, not really digging their place and their position on the team, right? It, it doesn't feel good to be that guy, right? You want everybody in the locker room, you want everybody uh, in that segment room uh, to feel good about their role on the team. It's not a healthy place for the individual, whether it was myself in 2012 or Cooper Cup now. It's not a healthy thing for this team. For me, the best Chicago Bears offense that I was a part of, and it was legendary. We talk about, you know, McCown, Josh McCown uh, and backups, et cetera, et cetera. But when Josh was there and then Jay split some time, we had Alshon Jeffrey, we yeah, had Martellus Alshon. Bennett, we had Matt Forte. Matt Forte had a hundred something, hundred and four catches. Matt Forte went over a thousand yards rushing. I had over a thousand. Alshon had over a thousand. Martellus had eighty. That is a healthy and dangerous offense. To me, that's the best way to play football. And yes, there are sacrifices, but you'll win more. And then the whole environment and the culture of the team in the locker room yeah. is unbelievable. What were the conversations like in 2012? Because, you know, to me, Matt Forte is about as, you know, he, he wouldn't care about not getting looks and touches the way I the way I see him. Or, you know, to hear that Devin Hester is upset is surprising, too. Was there a conversation about it? Yeah, so, like, there was times Devin Hester and I, uh, after, you know, after practice or before practice, right, like, trying to figure it out. I, I remember a time it was emotional. We, we stayed in a, in a receiver room, and, and Devin had, like, tears in his eyes one day, right? It's like, I don't understand why this is not working out at wide receiver. We go through all of offseason, and it's Hester, and it's myself. He's the Z, I'm the X, and we're lighting it up. Yeah. And we're thinking that we're both going to go out there and have these big years, and then we get into the season, and Jay – felt comfortable only throwing to me, if I'm being honest. And, and so, like, this is my guy. This is my brother. This is the guy that's shown me all around Chicago. I'm at his house every single day playing pool. You know, he's 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 introducing to me people in the community. Yeah. And so I feel the way he feels, right? And so, like, those are some emotional times there. Earl Bennett. Earl Bennett and Jay Cutler, they played together at Vandy. Yeah. Right? Their relationship started way before, you know, Jay's and I's. We played in Denver together, drafted together. So you got to think about those dynamics. So uh, it, it was very... Uh, but it's not um, your fault, Brandon. It's not your fault Jay was looking your way. And it's not Cooper Cup's mm -hmm. fault that... Stafford only has eyes for him. And it's not Calvin Johnson's fault that when Matthew Stafford was in Detroit, he only had eyes for Calvin Johnson either. But if you're Allen Robinson and you're seeing this and you're want, you know, Allen Robinson, this is a guy we know what he what he can do or what he was able to do physically. This is a guy, 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns, never had that good quarterback. Now he gets onto a team that has Super Bowl expectations for really the first time in his entire career. And Matthew Stafford's allergic to him. So what advice would you give to Allen Robinson to sort of work his way in? into Stafford's circle? Great question. Very simple, Kay. And people don't like this and they don't dig it, okay? If I'm Allen Robinson, and, 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 I can coach, and I can text Coach McVay right now, Stafford, I know him, I respect him, I like Matthew a lot, right? But I'm being honest, okay? okay? If I'm Allen Robinson, I walk, I, I say, hey, Coach uh, and, and Mr. Quarterback, come together, huddle up, come tighter, and I say, Throw me the damn ball. That's it. That's it. I posted something yesterday okay. on my story. It might, it may still be up there. Okay, I reposted something. I, I'm going into the huddle I'm and Kyle Orton calls a play. Navy, Navy. And this is Coach McDaniel's first year, Coach uh, Josh McDaniel's first year as the head head coach for the Denver Broncos. 
And I said, no, no. He's sitting at five. I'm going deep. Throw the ball. And he's still, Navy, Navy, no. And then you see the, you know, the the replay of it. And I beat the guy. Yeah. And I go to the side. Like, I told you. I told you it was a touchdown. Kind of lost it a little bit. And what I wrote on this was, see, I was a lion and they tried to they tried to get me to be present myself as a sheep. You can't act like that. Don't communicate that way. No. In between those lines, it's about winning. And it's about going with your gut and seeing and believing in what you're seeing. And in the end of my career, when I started to mature, I started to lose some of that lion. So I would sit when I was playing for the Giants and even the Seattle, like I would sit back and I would be calm and collective collect it yeah. because yeah. I didn't want to rock the boat. It's a new environment. I don't know their relationship. I don't know how the quarterback or the head coach is going to respond here. So if I'm Allen Robinson, I take heed to what I'm saying right now, right? They'll forgive you, but you respectfully go up to them and say, I'm Allen Robinson. Don't forget, go turn on film from when I was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. From my time in right. Chicago, don't get that twisted. Chicago, they didn't know how to use me. But if you still turn on the film, you still see a, a, a top flight wide receiver. Yeah. You guys went out and paid me because you did your diligence. You did your work. You know what I'm capable of doing. So throw me the ball. Throw me the damn ball, you say. I mean, because even on the broadcast, I'm listening, they're like, Rand Jefferson, and then Odell will come back. And I'm like, you, Alan Robinson sitting on the bench, like, Exc hello, excuse me. So maybe that's the right advice, but it's definitely well, advice that no, no, no one wants to hear. Well, sure. well, here's the thing, too, and, and, and I say this because, you know, you got to think about the quarterback and, and, and Coach McVay. Right. A lot of times when you bring in, you know, these free agents or you draft these guys, it's hard to figure out what they do best, best, right? So it's still a lot of football left. You know, they got to learn Allen Robinson. Like, what does he do best? Is he a, a jump ball guy? Does he like to run deep digs? Does he like to, is it just throw him a slant, let him, you know, take it and run? My advice to, to, to the Rams is go back and watch film from the Jacksonville Jaguars days and lean into that. Because yeah. what I saw back then was a guy that could have easily been a top five wide receiver if he had the right quarterback and he was in the right situation. People are questioning. People are questioning Allen's health, saying he's a little older. He's got. But then I'm looking at Matthew Stafford. He hasn't taken a shot downfield once, and I'm worried about his elbow. And nobody's talking about it. And I am. I'm worried that this is a guy who takes, even if it's not there, he's looking downfield and he hasn't done it once. So I'm a little worried about that. So so there, there's a yeah. lot to unpack there. Go ahead. And, 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 and that's what we don't do enough on these networks and when we talk ball and we talk sports, right? A lot of times we don't have all the information because what you just said is key. Some of this could could, could be out of, uh, you know, an Allen's hands and yeah. out of his control or even Matthew Stafford. He's injured, right? So there, Or maybe Allen's not feeling right, you right. know? So. There's a lot of things that text we don't him. know. You should text him yeah, and let, let, let us know. Uh, B. Marsh, I want to switch to something a little bit more serious. We, of course, saw the scary situation with Tua. You are a former Dolphin. I know you have thoughts on this. And, you know, I know that they're trying to change and amend some of the protocols, which is what they should do, because this whole situation just sort of gives us a moment to reset and to revisit what's being done as we all need to do a better job of protecting our players. I think we can all agree with that. Now, years removed, I remember that you admitted to playing through a serious concussion. I think this was back in like 2010, early in your career, because you had motivations and you wanted to play too. What, looking back, now that you're removed and you care about player safety, uh, what do you remember about that situation? Uh, I, just the feeling of, if I come out this game, I'm not going to get the contract that I'm working towards right now. Like, I literally was in a contract year. Mm -hmm. And it was actually right here in, in D.C. playing against, at the time, the Washington Redskins, now the Washington Commanders. And uh, never forget, it was trips right. We had double underage picks. Selvignon was supposed to come out the backfield to the left, hit the, 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 the wheel backer. Uh, and it was a trust play, and I was going to come across the middle knowing that this guy was going to be free, but Selvin Young was going to pick him, and I was going to catch it and then get right up the numbers. So anyways, I came across the middle, and I believed that Selvin Young was going to pick up the guy, and boom, uh, I think the linebacker's name was Washington at the time. He just took my head off. And the first thing that went through my mind was stay here on the knee, right? Collect yourself you know, make sure you have your legs underneath you. Because mm -hmm. if I get up and I take one step to the left or the right and it looks like I'm stumbling, I'm in the protocol, they're taking me off the field. And now 
it, it wasn't about, you know, the, 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 this off season's work. I'm looking at since I was six years old, this was a dream of mine. Yeah. I'm going back to all the work that I put in from when I was six years old. Now I'm going to miss out on that $50 million contract. My mom, my mom, when I first got drafted, she was in a motel. My sister just had two kids and she was struggling. You know, the father wasn't sticking, standing up and doing what he was supposed to do. That responsibility was now on me. Now, who am I letting down? Who can I bless if I get this contract? So what I did was I stayed on that knee, uh, collected my myself, I got up, and the thing that, that saved the day for me, which was bad, was it was a TV timeout. So I had time, I had a little bit more time. And uh, I played through it, ended up getting a big deal, et cetera, et cetera. But for, for the next two and a half to three weeks after that hit, I couldn't close my eyes without stumbling. I couldn't tie my shoes and I didn't let anyone know. And that's why it's important, what you said earlier, for everyone else to protect the mm -hmm. player. Because what makes us great and what gets us here is our ability to overcome that pain, to right. fight through it, that machismo approach, that warrior mentality. The good athletes, the great athletes have something that just in their mind that wants to fight through. Well, you only have, we have 17 have games, or now 18. Like, you, you you, work your whole life for something, and everything is elevated because you only have a certain amount of time, and you're playing for that check. It's exa You're not the only story like this. There's story after story of beating the concussion protocol. So I ask you this, and they're trying to remove the gross motor instability from concussion protocols and all that, but as someone who cares about players, you care about players, you love them, you're one of them. If you had the power to change the protocol, what exactly would you do? Uh, I, I think that, you know, it, it's, it's, how do I answer this question? Sorry. Um, we have to just enforce what already exists. Mm. I think the protocol is fine. You have down there uh, a dozen independent spotters and neurologists in the stadium. Do your job. Tua Tonga Valoa stood up and almost fell. Come on. It's obvious what's happening right here. Okay. So, you know, sometimes we overcompensate when things like this happen. Um, you know, public perception, the NFL is not doing their job. Yes, it's a bad look on the NFL. When you stand up and say, I care about player safety, and then the Tua Tonga Vailoa, he continues to play through whatever he's dealing with. Uh, that's a problem. But what happens is now we start overcompensating. Now we feel like we got to go change the rule. No, the rules are already good. You got 12 independent spotters in the stadium looking for this. Do your job. He should have been pulled out. And he should have been assessed the right way. And it's obvious the dude, he lost his motor skills. It was obvious. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see what the, uh, you know, amending is. I just, you know, if there was something different, I don't know, I don't know what the answer is. I just know that we're obviously not doing enough because it should never be a question uh, after what happened Sunday and then what happened Thursday. So uh, we, of course, wishing him the best. So, you know, we, and we can be as happy as we want that, that he feels a little bit better. But, you know, there's, there's bigger ramifications and we just need to do a better job of protecting our players, whatever that looks like. Uh, I will let you go, Brandon. I love that you're joining us from D.C. God only knows what you're up to, what universe you're you're dabbling into. Uh, and, <laughs> I mean, what do you want to talk about? Odell? Is Odell the biggest freaking flirt in the I entire world? I want to talk world? about two things. Okay. I want to talk about two things. How much time do we have? What are the producers saying do in you your ear right now? Do, do you want to take a break? What is Richard take, saying in your ear right no, now? No, let's go to, let, let's take a commercial break and come back. How about that? You cool? Okay. All right, All right take Richard, a break. Get we'll out of Kay's ear, Richard. I, I don't even know what you want to talk about. I want to talk Odell. Brandon wants to talk about something else. And I want to talk about unknown wide receivers. You from those push-ups on that bike. <laughs> Back with my friend Brandon Marshall. A quick Google search, my friend, tells me that you have uh, a sold out I Am Athlete main stage tonight uh, over at City Winery in Washington, D.C. This is amazing. Right. No, it's cool. Uh, I was nervous. Um, we were scared to death on our first one in New York a couple weeks ago. And it was a phenomenal experience. And tonight's going to be cool as well. And then we play Philly. Uh, next week, so October 13th. It's cool connecting oh. with our audience. Is LaShawn McCoy going to be there for the Philly one? He better. That'll but, be you know, he just took fun. a new gig. He just took a new gig, so it's scheduled during the week. Um, it's tough. I know. But, I uh, tried hitting him through. up, too. I was like, LaShawn, why don't you pop by my show? And he's like, oh, I'm busy. I have my new fuck show, which I'm really happy for him <laughs> for. He's the best. He's the best. I love, 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 love LaShawn. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Spit it out. 
So you want to talk about Odell, and then I want to talk about unsung wide receiver. Like I think I think we need to we need to show uh, other wide receivers love outside of the Tyreek Hills of the world, the yes. Stephon Diggs and the Justin Jefferson, more cases, huh? Who? Um, T Higgins. T Higgins. Do you know that T Hig- he he's a dog. T Higgins is on track to finish the year with 1,300 receiving yards. Now, Say it again. let's be honest now, when you have a dog wide receiver on the other side, it opens it up for you. You're going against the number two. He was good before him. Yes, but I'm looking at like, I'm looking at how he tracks the ball. I'm looking at his playmaking ability. Even if there's no wide receiver out there, there's some things that you see as a receiver is like, oh, that's skill. How you adjust, how you pick the ball off your shoelaces. He's in his bag right now. Uh, if it wasn't for him going out due to concussion protocols in, in one half, he would be on track for 1,600 yards in a season, which would put him in, in, in position to be an all-pro, have an all-pro year. So, T. Higgins, want to show you love, man. You're balling right now. Salute to T. Higgins. I love it. One of my favorite teams. He's so unheralded. I don't. It doesn't make any sense. I understand he's not Jamar Chase. I understand he doesn't have the connection with Joe Burrow that everybody likes to talk about, and that's a real thing. But T. Higgins does the dirty work out there for that team, and he's a huge part of why they got to the Super Bowl. Uh, OBJ won a Super Bowl in that game against the, the, the Bengals, of course. And I think the Bengals are the only team that he's not connected to. You said you wanted him with the Giants. He's flirting with the Giants. I said I, I want him in Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers is talking about him in Green Bay. Why is he flirting with everyone and what's he up to? So uh, 2018, I had an opportunity to play for the Giants, one of my last cup of teas. Odell was one of my teammates, phenomenal athlete, phenomenal person in the locker room. And we had some intimate conversations. And when he was looking at what his what his next step could potentially be uh, uh, in, in OBJ, I'm spilling the tea because it was a long time ago. And I don't know what your thought process is right now. I haven't talked to you, so I don't know, you know, what you're trying to do. And you won a Super Bowl, so, you know, what's important to OBJ could change right now. Right. But what I do know is that he really he really talked a lot about Tom Brady. What I do know, he really talked a lot about Aaron Rodgers, right? And you think about it, Aaron Rodgers, he needs some help. That could be a great destination, okay? But, but, but I know he loves Tom Brady. He loves Tom Brady. And guess what? Tom Brady is the ultimate uh, uh, recruiter. Right, Not only the right. competitor, but recruiter. So you know he's calling OBJ. And then the Giants make sense. Why does the Giants make sense? Because everybody in the building loves OBJ, okay? From the equipment managers up to ownership. Yeah. And was there some things he could have done differently back in the day? Probably. And ownership could have done some things differently. Now you're reunited. Your brother, Sterling Shepard, goes down. Sterling, we're thinking about you. I love you, brother. I know the last couple of years have been mm. tough. Just went down with an ACL injury. But now you got Odell Beckham Jr. coming in. You know, you got receivers that are banged up. You know, Danny Dimes needs some help. Danny Dimes could just throw it up, close his eyes, and guess what you're going to see happen on Sunday night, Monday night football, Thursday night football? I don't know. Who's a, better, who's a better recruiter? New York's its own thing, but New York's not going. New York's talking about get rid of Saquon, okay? Von Miller says he keeps texting Odell. Obviously, they won a championship together last year. He could go to Buffalo, doesn't he? What's more important to him? A, it, it, tell me this. Prior, let's, let's think like Odell. Is it the city you're in, which you're bringing back to New York? That's the only reason he'd go back to New York. Let's be honest here, to be in that city. Is it... Loyalty to the team you want to ring with, which will put him in L.A., McVay, and they've got a chance to win it. Is it playing with Tom Brady, a legend, in one of his last years? You know, because if, if City matters, then Green Bay is out, unfortunately. Like, he doesn't want, you know, a lot of people say he'll never go to Green Bay and want to be there, even if he is playing with, uh, with Aaron Rodgers. So prioritize what's important to Odell. Yeah. If I'm Odell, uh, I would be looking at where can I go and contribute right away? Where can I go and, 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 and leave an imprint on a game? Why? Because it gets my career back on track. If yeah. I can go out there, similar to what he did last year, Odell, he's done. He hasn't scored a touchdown in seven, eight games, and all of a sudden, boom, he lands in L.A., and now he has two touchdowns a game for four weeks in a row or whatever he was doing. He needs to find that type of groove again, whether it's L.A., whether it's Tampa, whether it's Green Bay, because what ended up happening is he's now in position to have – Uh, a contract extension. He's now in position to feel good about the next three, four, five years, however long he wants to play because he's back on track. So if I pulled up, if I pulled up the FanDuel app and there were odds on where he'd end up, where would you put your money? 
Uh, I would say go to the FanDuel app and close your <laughs> eyes and open them up, and then it's going to be Tampa Bay right there at number Tampa one. Tampa Bay for Odell. Bay right I think he one. goes to the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Buffalo? It's not. I don't think it's a great fit. Yeah, I mean, Green Bay is the best fit. I just don't know if I see him going to Green Bay. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why. Well, to me, Green Bay could be the best fit because Aaron Rodgers. He, he he needs a wide receiver. Of course. Right? In Tampa, Tampa, you got Mike Evans, you still got Julio Jones in the mix, right? And you still got uh, uh, Chris Godwin still down there. So do you really want to be in that situation? But I know he loves Tom Brady. Um, who doesn't love Tom Brady? Green Bay, he needs the help. So you're really talking about impacting the game. Yeah. That could be number one. Buffalo, the reason why I don't love Buffalo K is because – you, you have Stephon Diggs right. in that relationship. What we talked about earlier, 2012, and that dynamic of my relationship with Jay Cutler, like it's weird when you have a free agent coming in, big name like that, and now you have Stephon Diggs, big name, big personality. Yeah, but Josh does Odell want a hunt? Does Odell need 100 catches? Odell didn't have 100 catches with the Rams, and he was okay. Cooper Cup was there. How is that different no, but, from having Stephon Diggs in Buffalo? I know, but they love Gabe Davis as well, though. Yeah. Right? So now you have these, like, like the thing about Buffalo, those guys are so close. It's hard to break through. It's similar mm. to, to what's happening in, in L.A. with the Rams and Allen Robinson, right? We just talked about that. It's just hard. Like, it's a beautiful thing, but it's hard for a wide receiver or anybody, for that matter, to come in and try to, breakthrough right away. It's just tough. It's I tough. want him in Green Bay. I think that would be a fun little show. And they would be in, be. and they're going to have to throw the ball eventually. The and then just changed. He'd hold be on, fun. Hold on, hold on, hold on. FanDuel. So let me see. I think the odds just changed. Let me check. <laughs> I think it's now Green, Green Bay is the favorite. Okay. I, when you, you sat here in studio with me and I said I wanted him to go to Green Bay. Yep. yep. You have to tell Green me Bay. twice. Appleton, Wisconsin, Odell. There's a nice condo in Appleton, Wisconsin for you. There's a great, that's nice, it. that's all. Yeah, we need to see Odell spotted at the Piggly Wiggly. That's all I need in my Have you life. ever been to Apple, Wisconsin? I've been to Appleton. I was just in Appleton last weekend. For real? Doing what? I went to the game. I got. I have family in Appleton. B Marsh, we gotta go because we've been, you have. We've, we love you, but you've been on the show for thirty-five minutes. I'm coming back. Enjoy, I'm coming please. Back to the I next love city. you. We love you so much. Enjoy the city winery. Yeah. I would tell people to get tickets, but it's sold out. I am yeah. athlete taking yeah. over the world. Brandon Marshall smiling. Uh, you know, Alan Robinson, throw me the damn ball. That's what I learned in this conversation. What do you guys think of an Adam show? We will be back after this because we do have Thursday night football to get to. As fun as that is, because one of these two lousy teams has to win. Everyone in my control room is freaking out right now because we're supposed to have Brendan Marshall on for eight minutes, 10 minutes. It's now 40 minutes into the show, but he was so incredible and we thank him for coming on. And uh, I'm going to tell you now about something called Twisted Tea. That's right. Twisted Tea's college football picks is back and you can enter for free at FanDuel.com. And if you don't win this week, don't worry, you'll have more chances all the way through week 13, which has a, is this right? a $100,000 prize pool. Whoa! Make sure to sign up this week and every week for your chance to win. It's game time. It's game time. It's game time. How was it week five already? Wow, the Denver Broncos host the Indianapolis Colts tonight on Thursday Night Football. And for more on this game, let's bring in my new best friend, uh, Nick Kosmeiter, who is Polish and covers the Broncos for The Athletic. Nick, nice to meet you. It's great to meet you, Kay. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for being here and for waiting patiently as, uh, you know, Mr. Marshall went to, went to D.C. He was actually in Washington, and he's filibustering my entire program and hijacking it, but that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about these Broncos that you know in and out. They're sitting there at 2-2, two and two, like so many NFL teams are, as we look forward to Week 5, which kicks off hours from now. Uh, expectations were not two and two expectations were mile high when they brought in Russell Wilson in fact and he looks a little better he doesn't look great is he ready to turn the corner you know there are certainly some signs Kay that he's progressing that way and the biggest thing is the last two games the win over the 49ers and then the loss to the Raiders in week four he has started playing 
uh, a little more outside of the pocket. He has started to kind of do the Russell Wilson things that we've all known so well over the last 10 years. Um, and, and that's sort of what the Broncos have needed. They are a complete boom or bust offense right now. No team in the league finishes more of their drives with punts than the Broncos, but they're also fourth in explosive play percentage. So it's either Russell Wilson is bailing this team out or they're not getting anything done on offense. And, and so that's that's the kind of middle ground they're looking for right now. Yeah, and the, the co questions about the coach are many, right? The penalties, the timeouts right off the bat there. He's been heavily scrutinized, and he's you know supposed to be this offensive guru, and he's, of course, linked with Aaron Rodgers, which makes things worse for him because there's prejudice there. I know how the fans and the media feel just by the pulse on Twitter. How's the trust between Hackett and his locker room, though? You know, I, I think there is a lot of... I think there's a lot of goodwill that he built up during the off season, right? He, he came in and he was very clear about what their plan was going to be. They weren't going to play their starters in the preseason. They, they were going to kind of go through this camp that was sort of designed to, um, you know, really drill down the details of the offense, but maybe not so much of the, you know, again, the preseason action. And, and I think players bought into that plan. And, and the one thing that he has done well, because you mentioned it, I have not seen the scrutiny for a first year head coach in his first two games, Tough. like what Nathaniel Hackett faced. Um, but but I think that sort of the transparency, sort of the admission to his own mistakes, the fact that after that week two win against Houston, he went out and hired Jerry Rosberg as his game manager, right? Mm -hmm. The longtime Baltimore Ravens assistant. Um, so I, I think there is that trust. But again, they have to start showing that, hey, it's not just the, you know, some of the game management stuff. They have to create more of a flow offensively. They're, they're just going through these slogs and games, K, where they're punting three, four times in a row. And like I said earlier, just waiting for Russell Wilson to bail them out. They need to get on a more consistent track. 37 penalties, most in the league. Short week this week, but bright lights. Everyone's watching. Limit the penalties. Stop punting. Yeah. A great call and by most you. Most of those have been on offense, too. That's that's the thing that's been been really killer because they're putting themselves behind the chains every time. They have this, you know, they have these called what they call the GTBO plays, the get back on track plays when you lose a couple yards on first down or second down. And, you know, offensive coordinator Justin Outen said this week, we've been in that section of the play sheet like the majority of the games um, because they're trying to get back ahead of the sticks. And so they, they have not gotten to the things they want to get to offensively because of the penalties you mentioned, because of, you yeah. know, what, whether it's, you know, fumbles, of, of course, Melvin Gordon, the issues he's had there. Um, it's it's just been a lot that has prevented them from kind of finding any traction. I do. I, I don't know how I feel about Hackett hitting the in the podium and saying, you know, I believe in Melvin Gordon. Giving, I, he does. I, I, I sense him not wanting to lose the locker room, but also he's got, you know, the fumbles are costing them games with Melvin Gordon, and now he's going to have a bigger role potentially, right? Javante Williams, he suffered a season injury injury that's so brutal. That was yeah. last week. So who do they lean on? Because I'm getting so many Twitter questions about it. It, it's it's such a unique situation because I think that had Javante Williams not gotten hurt on Sunday against the Raiders, I don't know that Melvin Gordon would be a part of the rotation anymore. Um, it, it, it got it got that bad. Even going into that game, Kay, um, Melvin Gordon did not touch the ball until there were three minutes left right. in the second quarter. This is his third year on the team. I've never seen that with him. And that first carry turns into the, the back-breaking fumble. I, and it's, it's one of those situations where if you had another choice – and you put him back out there and you he fumbles again, that's not on Melvin Gordon at that point. That's on the coaching staff for, for making that choice and, and riding with him. But now they don't have a choice. Javante Williams is out. They, they signed Latavius Murray off the Saints practice squad. T-Train! That's what I want. <laughs> I want. I, be, I bet you Latavius Murray has two touchdowns in him. He's a huge – I just. I bet you he does. Brilliant game when he had to play last week. It's why you guys signed him. I hope for a kismet performance. He's one of my favorite players, honestly. Well, how about this? Latavius Murray is going to have a chance to play two games in London this year if he's if he's still riding because the Broncos go there like that's got to be a first. Uh, and and look, I think he's going to be into the mix quickly. Mike Boone is the other running right. back on the roster, has some explosive playmaking ability, but doesn't pass protect well, has had a couple drops in the passing game. So they're up against it. The bottom line is Melvin Gordon. It's up to him. He has got to be able to not fumble the ball because they have to run the ball. They, they can't depend on Russell Wilson 
to throw 50 times a game. And a bit of a blessing in disguise for this Broncos side that Jonathan Taylor, you know, it, it does it kind of balances out. He's, of course, been ruled out for this game. So we'll see what Naeem Hines can do uh, in his steps tonight under the bright lights of Thursday Night Football on Amazon Prime. We appreciate you, Nick Kosmider, covering those Broncos for us so carefully and for The Athletic, where we can check out all of your stuff. Uh, we didn't get to say bye to him, but we'll be back after this. I don't know why I'm sitting like this, but we are just doing it. Listen, that's why I asked him for you guys. Is it Latavius Murray? Is it Mike Boone? I know you want sleepers. You've got injuries. You've got problems. Bye weeks are on their way. Woof, I got your help. Next. FanDuel Casinos just launched their exclusive FanDuel-branded Live Dealer Casino, and it's available to play in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Now, you don't need to leave home to be in the casino. You can play all your favorite table games like blackjack and roulette with a real live dealer. If you guys need, like, a celebrity dealer to, like, do it one day, I would love to do that. That would be really fun. Anyway, it's real cards against real competition, and you guessed it, real money. Their deposits and withdrawals are so fast and secure, it is like being at a real life casino. All right, let's talk a little value. That looks like a lady who found somebody as a sleeper. She was so excited to get a win there. So I have some options for you. Do not sleep on these guys. You up, Ramondre Stevenson? Let's go. Even as a backup to Damian Harris, a lot of value right now. The Pats leaning on the run game. We know their quarterback situation's kind of mucky. It's up in the air, and there are plenty of carries to go around. He had 18 touches last week. That's great. 99 yards against the Packers. I was there in the flesh. He looked good. And this weekend, he's facing a Lions defense. As we all know, this a lot of points those lines but they let a ton they're very generous they're gift wrapping fantasy points to running back second most this season Travis Etienne another guy that you need to get in your daily fantasy lineups over at FanDuel he's gotten off to um, kind of a slow start but he's playing on about 50% of Jaguar snaps so the opportunity for volume is there and he's got the Texans this weekend uh, remember how I told you how the Lions allow the second most points to running backs want to know who allows the most points to running backs Brian it's the Texans! Yeah. Get him in your lineup. You're not even paying attention. Take notes. Are you winning your fantasy league? No? Take notes, Brian. Uh, Josh Reynolds, someone else I think you should be interested in because if Amon Ra, who we love and know, can't go, uh, you know, this is a must-start situation. He has gotten 18 targets the last two weeks, 177 yards total, and a touchdown. Patriots, they're middle of the pack against wide receivers this year. Great pass rush, but they're allowing some points. They're not this shutdown defense that they once were, so don't let the Patriots scare you away from getting Josh Reynolds in your lineup. Should I give you another wide receiver because I love you? Fine, 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 I will. Robert Woods, uh, his targets, yes, they've been up and down. They've been, you know, all over the map this year. But if there was a week to play him, I do think it's against this struggling Washington defense. The commanders have allowed the most touchdowns to the wide receiver spot this year and the second most points overall. Man, I love when we're four weeks in and you have enough data to support trends in this game. Uh, last but not least, I submit... Tyler Conklin. Again, because I love you, here's a great sleeper. Racking up targets, volume matters. He is seventh most among tight ends so far this season when it comes to target share. He's also pulled up back-to-back -back games with 50-plus yards. This weekend, it's the Dolphins defense. The Dolphins defense has allowed the third most yards to tight ends so far this season. So if we take a quick look at everybody, Tyler Conklin, the Jets tight end, uh, a nice little sleeper there. You up, Tyler Conklin? Hop into my FanDuel Daily Fantasy lineup. Uh, oh, we don't have a recap screen. Ramondre Stevenson, Travis Etienne, Josh Reynolds, Robert Woods, and Tyler Conklin. One day. One day we'll get this right. All right, we've got this guy next. I heard he's dressed as the Easter Bunny. Oh, that's what uh, Conrad said that, not me. Conrad said that on me. I love you, Jeff. You're going to teach me what a teaser is. Sounds yes. fun. Our next guest is an NFL veteran and current gambling analyst at Fox Sports and the only person patient enough to try to teach me about sports betting. His name's Jeff Schwartz, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff? I'm glad to be here. I, I'm glad to help you out. We'll, we'll, we'll teach you what a teaser is in a few minutes. I, I just, people have tried. Many have tried. All have failed. <laughs> but let's start with Thursday Night Football. It's kind of a toughie to pick. It's an ugly game, and that's why sports betting is so fun when it comes to these Colts and these Broncos. What do you got? Well, Kay, you know you can bet this game to end in a tie. I heard you earlier talk about how this game might not be good. You can do that if you would like to. But I'm going to bet it under here because I think both teams cannot score. I mean, I know both teams cannot score. Colts have, have gone under four of their four games so far. Denver in three of the four. And Thursday Night Football, in most primetime games in the last year, mm. have gone under as well, right? Both running backs out. 
on a short week. Don't trust both quarterbacks. So I'll go under 42 here. Low scoring game. The Broncos rank 30th in points scored this season. Womp womp. While the Colts have ranked dead last. <laughs> Woof. Uh, I hear you have a couple props for me. What's shaking over yes. at FanDuel Sportsbook? So I'm going to go Michael Pittman over 62 and a half receiving yards. He's been over that number twice this year. He's really the Colts' only option tonight, in my opinion, to move the ball down the field, right? With uh, with no Taylor and them keyed up kind of on stopping the run, it will, uh, okay. will, will Denver. So I'll go Pittman here over. And then Russell Wilson under 231 passing <gasps> yards. He, he's just, yeah, quarterback unders are the way to go. Don't ever bet overs on quarterbacks. They're so hard to hit. Under can hit so many different ways. He has struggled so far this season, but under this number twice. He would have been under last weekend except for a final pass uh, of the game. Bet under here. Colts have done a good job so far this year against quarterbacks. Under 231.5 yes. passing yards for Russell Wilson? Yes. Well, you're the boss. I don't know. All right. <laughs> now explain to me, stack the board, and explain to me what a teaser is. Okay. So a teaser is when you want to move a side or a total in different directions, six points or more. A standard teaser is six points. And what you do, you try to move it through key numbers. So on a side, right? So Kansas City's favored by seven or seven and a half. Okay. The key numbers in the NFL on those are seven and three. Most games end seven and three. So what you do is you say, I think Kansas City will win. I'm not quite sure about seven and a half. So I'll move them from seven and a half down to a point and a half, right? So if the, if the Chiefs win by two points or more, I win this wager. Instead of seven and a half points, now it's one and a half points. So I, I, I like to move favorites a lot of times in this direction. So it goes under a field goal essentially, right? So we'll take Kansas City now under the field goal to cover against the Raiders. We'll take Jacksonville as a seven point favorite, move them down to a one point favorite. All they got to win by is more than one point against the Texans this weekend. And you, and you can count on this leg as part of your, te uh, your teaser. The last one for me is Tampa Bay. I think the number is now nine. It was eight and a half earlier when I sent this in uh, yesterday. So okay. that would be two and a half now for Tampa Bay. So I get all three teams under a field goal. But this is like a parlay games. situation where you have to get them all right. You have to get them all right, but you have a little bit more leeway in – in, uh, in, excuse me, I took the Packers. I'm sorry. I took the Packers here. Got seven it. and a half to, to minus a, a point and a half against the Giants um, in a low scoring game, I think, in London. So, so it's, yes, it's like it's like a teaser. You have to win all three legs, but you get plus 140 here. So you get 100. You win 140. Um, I like to do this. Why have I never heard about Thank teasers? You. Like what? what are they, it sounds like an attractive, like low risk -ish it's, it's way not, to do it's it. Not, it's nope. a good way. It's a good way. It's better than a parlay, in my opinion. Not as big of a payout as a parlay, but it's a good way to play with numbers. You, you get better numbers doing teasers. I got to be honest with you. You lost me like ten seconds into the <laughs> teaser. <laughs> I need it. I need. I need a whiteboard. I need a whiteboard, okay. a lab coat. Next time, I have a whiteboard. Eighty-nine calculator. You're the best of shorts. Take care. <laughs>